After having gone on many interviews myself, after having been on admission committees and talked to individuals that have been on many different admission committees, after scouring the sacred holy texts that are Reddit and SDN, I have put together the most perfect medical student application. Make sure you watch the whole video before you go down and comment. And while you're down there, please go ahead and subscribe. Thank you. And the point of this video is what I personally, what I personally think is a solid medical student. These are the things that I am looking at and the weight that I'm putting on these things to consider you as a solid medical student that I would accept to my program. What better place to start off than the MCAT? So what is that golden MCAT score that you want? Well, I would argue that it is 515. I'm gonna lump everybody in the 515 and above in their own little pot. You are a very good candidate and very competitive for medical school if you are 515 and above. With this score, you've shown that you excel at standardized test taking, and is any of this really important for being a doctor long-term? The answer is absolutely not. But unfortunately, these exam scores play a bigger role than just telling us how good you are at standardized exams. Programs get more funding. They are ranked in a higher prestige value with the higher scores they have. They predict your future standardized test taking ability because you do need to take further standardized tests. Among those reasons, there are a variety of other more technical, logistical, political reasons for why you need these tests. So 515 and above, you're on the list for a perfect medical student candidate. And you know where we're gonna go after MCAT and that is straight to your GPA. For this one, 3.6 seems to be that sweet spot where again, if you're above that kind of threshold, you are looking solid as a student. Now, this one is a little special because there is a lot of variation in GPA. It depends on what program you go to, who your professors are within that program. For example, at UC Berkeley, when I first started, if you take chemistry right when you get in, in the fall, you take it with thousands of students. Most of them are on the pre-med track. Your curve is gonna be a lot harder. Your professor is more difficult. The students that wanted to get ahead of the curve, unfortunately, which I didn't know about, is they will wait this one semester, take it in the spring, you have an easier professor. These are individuals that might be taking it for another reason other than being on the pre-med track. So there are a lot of little games that you can play to get your GPA right. Of course, massive variation between schools on how one class compares to another. You can have one chemistry class that is insanely hard at one school and in another school it was a cakewalk. So GPA, uh, there's a lot of leeway to go through there, but overall I think 3.6 is that sweet spot. For me, GPA is just not that important. Now, if you're struggling to maintain a 3.0, regardless of what program you're at, that is a little worrisome because going forward, you're gonna be taking a lot of tests, it's a lot of science, you have to be doing somewhat well at grasping material and regurgitating it on a test. It's just the way our education system is and struggling to get a 3.0, now you're in a little iffy zone. But if you do something like a post back program, a master's, you're excelling, you're showing that you're growing and your GPA is getting higher. I put massive weight on that. That is way more important to me than your freshman class, chemistry class when you were 17 year old, just coming straight in. Extracurricular activities. Again, I look at this a little differently than other individuals on the admissions committee. I don't care that you have 20, 30 extracurricular activities. What I'm really looking for is that you really invested your time into something that matters. Whether it be that you're volunteering at a homeless shelter, a hospital, you're a scribe, whatever you're doing, as long as you've shown that you're passionate about it, you've stuck with it over a solid amount of time, you've shown growth, you can talk in your personal statement or somewhere on your application about how it's helped you and it really resonates with me that you put a lot of effort and weight onto this extracurricular activity, that's what I look at more than just having 20 different extracurricular activities. For example, I still remember this one applicant that came in, he actually put on his application that he was the captain of this, I forget what video game it was, but he was a captain of a specific video game team. He played internationally. He spoke about, even during the interview, he was really impressive the way he spoke about it. It sounds insanely uh, weird and off topic uh, initially, but when he spoke about how it helps his leadership skills, his confidence, how that is gonna translate to him being a better doctor, it kind of all made sense. It made sense more than some other of these traditional extracurricular activities. So you can really spin a lot of this stuff as long as you're passionate about it, you've grown from it, you contributed to society somehow, and you can connect it to how this is gonna make you a better doctor. That's what we're looking for with extracurricular activities. Now let's get on to research. Now research is something that I know a lot of us, a lot of us do not like and enjoy doing and has really nothing to do with your 
ability to be a doctor long term. It's unfortunately just another uh, way to separate individuals that want to apply because there's thousands of applications. It's just another way to separate out the applications. Personally, I understand this. I personally don't put a lot of weight to research unless it's something that an individual is truly passionate about. They've contributed to a project and they can speak about it and you can tell it's not just that they signed up just to sign up to check off the box of research. Um, other than that, if you've done research and you're passionate about it, that's a great addition to your application. If you don't have research, it's not something that I personally uh, retract from your application. Now, letters of recommendation. Now, this is pretty important in terms of it has to be from an individual that you obviously worked with. It has to be a professor, a research PI, somebody that you've had direct connection with. And it is important that they write good stuff about you. <laughs> And I don't really look at the length. You know, some people say, oh, your letter of recommendation has to be like two pages long or else these guys didn't really care about you. For me, it could even be a paragraph, a couple sentences. I understand how busy these individuals are. As long as it's what's written on there is genuine and I and I get that they really saw something in you and they wrote it in the paper, I'm gonna be able to consider that a good letter of recommendation. Personal statement. Now with the personal statement, the truth of the matter is there's thousands and thousands of pages. There's no way people go through all of those. Again, is a very rare occurrence that it plays a critical role in your application. The key is for me, as long as you don't shoot any red flags out at me, it can be generic. It doesn't have to be this revolutionary personal statement. It's very rare. It's far more rare than you think that the personal statement actually makes a difference. Now, are there stories where an individual wasn't up to par and a bunch of things with their personal statement turned around? Absolutely. But rare occurrence. I understand that you just want to help people. You want to have this amazing role in somebody's life and make a difference and all this stuff. And I understand there's only so many ways you can switch it around until you are just saying, I want to help people in this elaborate way that you got off the source.com. Now for a super important part of the application process for me is the interview. So the key here is it can be a critical part of the application or it can not help or hurt your application at all or it can get you absolutely off the application list. So to stay in that kind of middle ground, as long as you have basic human decency and I don't see any red flags, you aren't slamming doors on people, aren't going off and talking about you know money and why you're in it for this and that, like basic, basic red flags. If you avoid those, you should be okay. But you'd be shocked at how many times the red flags still come up. Making sure you're dressed appropriately. I don't even mind if you try to get cute with it, get a bow tie, you know, girls doing whatever they do. I don't mind any of that stuff. I don't consider it non-professional. I think, I think it looks cool if it looks cool. But if you get out of hand with it, you come in with like some overalls and like a, a nice little hat or something like that, uh, that's probably not gonna be looked as great upon by other people on the committee. But again, myself, I really wouldn't mind it. I might think that's pretty cool. Say an individual comes in, they're into basketball, they watch the same anime as me, we start chatting about that stuff, and next thing you know, I'm totally vibing with this medical school applicant. That kind of applicant that vibes with me is gonna have a huge boost in how much I recommend this individual because this is the individual you're gonna be working with in the future. This is who you're bringing onto your team. You want to be comfortable with that individual. You wanna have a good time going forward. You wanna be friends with these people. So that plays a pretty critical role. Is there much you can do about it in terms of changing your entire personality? Not really. This is something that you just, just vibe with. And with that, that is a perfect transition to the whole point of this entire video. Maybe throughout this entire video, you have been cringing and saying that is absolutely not what a good medical student application is. Or maybe you've been completely agreeing with me this whole time. Well, folks, that is the point of this whole video. Whether you're ultimately accepted in medical school or not is gonna come down to a variety of factors. Who ended up reading your application? How did they feel on that day personally? Who did you interview with? How did you vibe with that person? absolutely huge variability here. So you can have the perfect application, you can have the not perfect application in terms of stats. There's just so much variability that's very hard to make videos like this. So if anybody is out there telling you this is the perfect medical school applicant, there absolutely isn't. 
Are there things you can do to give yourself a statistically much higher chance of getting in? Absolutely. We can look at the numbers of 515 and MCAT and above and 3.6 GPAs and above. Your percentage of getting in or getting interviews starts going up to the 80s and 90%. Absolutely, there's a correlation with those things. But there is a significant chunk of individuals, and I would say this chunk is growing, that do not meet those statistics and have amazing stories that just vibe with the people reading their applications or vibe with them during interview day that find their way into medical school. So in the end of the day, whether you get in medical school or not is up to you to present yourself in the best way possible, but ultimately falls into who is on the other side reading your application and doing your interview. So guys, what are your thoughts on that? Do you have any ideas on how we can make this better? better. Like I said, in the future, I can definitely see myself and the rest of my siblings going into administrative things and maybe playing a big role in how medical students get in. I can definitely see that in our future. And that's something that we strive to do. As you can obviously tell with this channel, how passionate we are about this stuff. What are your ideas on how we can improve this procedure? Please let me know in the comments below. And I know whenever stats come up, getting into medical school comes up, all these kind of stressful things, people start freaking out. And that is entirely not the point of this video. The point of this video is regardless of where you are with your stats, regardless of where you are with your application, there's a chance you can be into medical school. The best way to do this, watch the rest of our videos, incorporate all those tips, present yourself the best you can, and then let's hope for the best. So with that guys, thank you so much for watching and we will see you guys in the next one.